Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Angel of Words podcast, where your stories are heard. I am your host, Angel of Words. And before we get started, don't forget to click on that notification bell on YouTube, like, follow, share, subscribe. You could also follow us on all podcast platforms. And again, a reminder, Spotify does show video now. So if you want to catch the video of this episode, you don't only have to go to YouTube. You can also go to Spotify. Now, that being said, if you want to know how to create your own podcast, if you want to know where to buy the equipment directly, go below, right down there. I have all the affiliate links you need. I'm providing you the information to start a podcast. And if you have any questions, you could always, always contact me via all my social medias or all my information on AOWENT in order to uh, get to get a consultation. So, you know, don't forget, it's right down there in the links below. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the merchandise, you know, that we sell and that you see here on the, uh, on the Angel of the Words podcast is available on AOWENT.com. So uh, don't be scared. Get on the website. Ride the waves. In addition, our sponsors today are OTW Threads reminding you to be out of this world and attitude on 10.com your place to start healing your trauma now on deck on the angel of words podcast we have a special guest it is miss deja monet founder of the black wall street is deja monet thank you for joining us here on the angel of words podcast it's a pleasure to have you Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, of course. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, girl. There's a lot to unravel. <laughs> I know. You're I doing know. the most. I know. You know, like, you know, every time, you know, I always getting engaged and involved in my, in my, you know, my guests and, you know, you know, making sure that I know as much as I can about what they're providing to the universe. And you are providing a lot, young lady, man. Like, how do you find the time? Um, honestly, I don't really believe in time that much. So I just do whatever comes to me. Okay. So time is an abstract thought to you. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's definitely an illusion. Well, it's easier said than done to put that into practice. Wow. I, yeah, definitely I is. respect your fortitude when it comes <laughs> Thank to you. doing that. <laughs> now, you know, I think, you know, when I think the Black Wall Street, you know, I think about what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, the stories that have been told, the things that I've researched, you know, the unfortunate atrocities that were committed there upon the people, you know, who were trying to rise up. Uh, is that a reason why you named your company after that? Yeah, that was one of the main reasons. Um, and it was during 2020, during the pandemic, when there were so many like uh, social and racial disparities and just um, violent things going on to black and brown people that really encouraged me to look more into the history of like, you know, how long have we been being held back in certain ways from just excelling above this? Because um you know, I've I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit, but um, seeing those things made me want to do something to change, like, mindsets, to change what it could look like in the future for us, and also to change what the present looks like for us to be able to still enjoy ourselves and, you know, live a, a light life, a peaceful life, even with these things going on, because I don't believe they're just going to stop overnight. And so um, after diving deep into that history, um, when I honestly started the company, it was really dark it got really dark and I was just like I just halted everything at one point because I'm like I don't want to keep talking about what happened I don't want to keep talking about um you know deaths of black bodies um it was getting a little depressing and so I stopped and I thought you know what what am I really trying to do not just you know revamp what the black wall street means because that already happened and actually got destroyed but to revitalize what black means and by itself. So Black Wall Street is B-L-A-K without the C, without capitalism, without colonialism, without colorism, um, because those are the things that hold us back as a humanity, like as a human race. So um, until we get in touch with our humanity, we'll continue to be held back by these, these races, Black, white, other, you know. So I wanted to actually redefine what Black meant. And so black for me is be loving and kind, because I feel like as a human race, if we're all being loving and kind, then a lot of these things that we go through together collectively won't even take place. Wow. 
that's you really blew my mind because I, you know, I feel the same way. You know, I'm gonna follow up with this because that was gonna be one of my follow up questions. You know, when people, you know, let's say you see that initially. You know, I'm thinking like, oh, maybe it'll alienate people from other races. But your company is not about that. No. You know, so I was interested as to why you left the C out of Black Wall Street. And that's the reason why, because you want to empower everyone with your businesses. This is not something just catered to the black experience, if you will. Right. And I also feel like just to be like really clear, um, anything I do, there's going to be mad black people there. Yeah. (laughs) Like I'm black and... um, you know, black as the race. And I'm proud to be who I am. It's just that the word has a connotation um, that was built within this society that I don't really, I'm not so comfortable with. Um, I like to address myself as a light, as a being, a a, a creator, uh, you know, before black. Like, I'm Deja before I'm black. I'm a human before I'm black. I'm loving before I'm black. So um, I feel like that needs to be like the last thing you say, not the first. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I want to put it that way because also we're not the only ones who can change the world. You know, like I feel like it's going to take a collective um, collective effort. It's not just black people who can help black people because black people didn't put themselves in that situation. So why would I isolate the other people who actually need to be held accountable for the things that they've done? So the only way that you can actually, um, you know, get change to begin to happen. And I'm not trying to, I can't say I'm not trying to change the world. I definitely am. But I don't believe that I'm just going to be able to you know, change the world like this, but I can be a catalyst of that change by um, encouraging all types of people, all humans to just come together and just be more loving and kind to each other because that's where it really starts. Like being loving and kind to yourself will allow you to realize how you're not being loving and kind to other people. And then it just continues to be a domino effect. So, And, you know, I, I noticed that you, wrote, you mentioned that in Purple Sister. In yes. your poem, Purple Sister. Yes. So that was the essence of the poem, I, you know, which you just finished, you know, your dissertation right now, essentially. Yeah. So, because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I see that, you know, that, you know, it's it's about a, a lady with a different color hue in her hair. Mm-hmm. Purple, you know what I'm saying, was the hue. Yeah. But, you know, they focused more, you know, it made you, re- in the poem, she realized that they focused on the, the color of my skin more than this, you know, this eccentric hair color that I'm, yeah. that I'm offering. Yeah. And you feel like, and, and, and that's something that you, you're trying to change. Would you say is that that's like a message towards healing? Because I noticed that your brand is about healing. Yeah. And and that's like kind of like uh, at the, at its core what mm-hmm. you're trying to alleviate. Yeah, for sure. Um, Purple Sister, that's like one of my favorite poems that I wrote. Um, and I also made a tote bag with Purple Sister on it. So. Yes, I know. Yeah. That. We'll get into that. Yeah. It's a lot um, to talk about, guys. We got a lot to unravel. So stay <laughs> tuned, you know? Yeah. So with that, with that, um, that poem, though, I actually was working when I graduated college um, in 2019. I I got into a job, which I was so excited to get into, right? Because um, the job I was at during college, I was making not that much money, but I was working with like intellectual and developmentally disabled children and adults. And so you don't make so much, but you put a lot of work out into that field. Um, and everybody around me was telling me, you're not going to get a job that you can make $50,000 a year right out of college. And I was like, yes, I am. Or I'm not working there. <laughs> so I, I got uh, this job and I was so excited because um, none of my, I mean, I wasn't excited that I was making more than my friends, but it was just my peers they weren't, they didn't get a job that quickly. They actually were just like partying all summer. But I started my job like two days after graduation. Like I was dead serious. Um, So with that, I didn't realize what would come with that. Um, Especially going from like $15 an hour to like 28 um, within two day time period and realizing that that's not the norm. Um, I thought that was normal because that's what I wanted. And I've always seen myself as just continuing to excel. Like, so when I got into this job, I didn't realize I was going to be the only black girl. I didn't realize that I was going to be in a city where I go to lunch and there's no black people. I didn't realize that the only other was not black. It was just white people and Indian people. Um, It was in Parsippany. And so uh, it was a IT company, like really like multi-million dollar company. It was a small company, but like large in stature and, uh, and finance and things like that. Um, So I would go to work and every day I went to work, I felt like I had to zip myself out. Like I was, you know, going to work like, all right, let me walk in, you know. And I was the only girl on my team, a black girl on my team. Um, 
And so it was just a really alienating experience that I I didn't enjoy it at all. I enjoyed the luxuries of it. So, you know, at the beginning, I'm I'm getting like doused in all the luxury things. They're like, oh, yeah, we pay for your lunch every time you got breakfast and you go to the city to do trainings and you get reimbursed. You know, you like that stuff. And I get my paycheck. I really like that. The bells and whistles were there. Right. You know, you know I'm like, they gave me like a free Costco card. I said, oh, y'all lit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, I was yeah, that even, Costco card comes in handy. It came you know? crazy, right. Um, also, like I even got like a discount to like purchase my car. So like it was a lot of benefits with this. Um but when I would walk into work, I would think, OK, what are they going to think about my outfit? What are they going to think about my hair? Um, and so one day I had got like this. Um, I got this like ginger colored hair, like locks like this, but ginger. And so I was like, they're going to say something. But when I walked in, nobody really said anything. But I got the same looks that I usually get. And I think the anticipation of me thinking they were going to say something about my hair made me feel even more uncomfortable that they didn't say anything because they were thinking it. Um, and I'm like, they don't care about my hair. It's me that they're looking at. They already, you know, I'm the eyeball. They don't care about what color my hair is. It's the fact that I'm even in the space. So um, after that, I ended up leaving that job. Eventually. Well, actually, they fired me um, illegally, but I'm not even going to get into oh that. Oh, my God. Crazy. Jesus. Yeah. Um, and I'm the type of person that's very like, you know, outspoken. Like I'm going to say, but did, were you, did you feel you were doing your job? Do you feel it oh, was absolutely. based on merit? So it, it wasn't based on merit. Oh the, no. The firing was just straight based on that. You made people feel uncomfortable essentially. No, literally because okay. they would be like in the conference room, for example, laughing about yeah. things. It was only, um, like I said, in that city, it's like white people and Indian people. And so someone was complaining about the Indian people that lives next door to them because they live in the same city. And I'm just sitting there like. You know, y'all all white talking about these Indian people, but I'm just a hop, skip and a jump from them. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't here, would you be talking about black people? That's how I felt. So yeah. I was just sitting there angry. And it was in a de de derogatory manner. Yeah. They were calling them like dirty and like they don't speak English and just a whole bunch of just yeah. nasty things they were saying. And yeah. I didn't agree with that. Um, first, just you don't talk about other people like that, regardless of your race, culture, whatever. And then on top of that, it just makes me feel like if I was not in this room or those days that I call out or I have a PTO day or I'm not here, I'm in training, then you're probably talking about black people, too. It's just whoever is not around. So because um, there was like a couple Indian people that worked there, too. So it's just like it was just very weird um, how comfortable they felt doing that, especially around me. And so I said to them, I said, um, I don't think this is appropriate. We should we should change the conversation because if I wasn't here, would you talking about me and my people? And so I think these are some of the reasons that I got fired because <laughs> they yeah. didn't like that stuff. I'm saying this to like the CEO. Well, Deja, I'm, I'm going to, you know, because I love to play the devil's advocate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, what what would you say to the people that tell you, you know, don't worry about that? You know what I'm saying? Um, at the end of the day, you're you're in a position that you're winning right now. You mm -hmm. know, well, you know, what difference does it make the, the type of conversation people are having around you? It's just people's opinions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're allowed to say what they want to yeah. say. You know, why do they have to censor themselves? You know, to make other if that's the way they feel, you know, and they're speaking freely amongst peers. Mm -hmm. I, I totally believe that people have freedom of speech. But do I have to respect what you say? No. no. And do I think that it's um, inconsiderate to speak nasty about people? Yeah, it's just not loving. Like, I don't feel that it's necessary for you to say things that are going to hurt people or nasty, negative things about people because it's only a reflection of you because there's so many other things they could have said about these people. But they decided to say that they don't smell good or they're not clean or whatever um, when I'm sure there's a lot of choice words those same people could say about them. And what they've done to this country, <laughs> to say the least. I mean, I hear you, but they're going to you know? say, you know, focus on you getting your paper. Like, why are you worried about everything else? Because money is not what drives me. Okay. But it, it is what drives, you know, the economy and this, you know, this system is based on how much money you make, essentially. The system. But yeah. I don't exist as, I don't exist as if, you know, my, my worth or my value is based on what I can contribute to society. Because if I did, I'd be depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. All right, elaborate. You please. know, like, uh, yeah. um, I feel like people focus too much on you know what they make and these societal pressures that will really have you sitting in a corner like shivering and crying if you think about you know if I don't have this much money then I'm not worth this because money can come and go. You could be a millionaire today and lose it all tomorrow. 
you could have five dollars today and be a millionaire tomorrow. So if I focus, if everything is focused on money, if I'm chasing money, then I'm just chasing something that doesn't even really mean anything in itself. You know, so I always go back to how we started as humans before there was all of this, um, I guess, civilization. We weren't here to just work. We're only here because we we have civilization and we have an economy. These things weren't even there. And so at the core of our beings, we're still humans. And so we have to tap into that and be like, I'm not here to work. I'm here to be, literally. That's all I'm here to do. And so now I understand that because I live in this material world, that this is something that comes with it. But I understand, though, that regardless of what the society puts up and these all of these illusions like money and time and all these different structures, um, at the end of the day, humans just have to be themselves and just just want to love freely, want to just be a light, you know. And if you if you're doing that, the money flows to you easily because money flows to me, you know, because I'm being. When I wasn't, I had to work very hard for money. I don't have to work extremely hard for money anymore. And I know if the money is not coming, it's something that I have to work on. It's not, um, I'm not valued or, you know, I don't, not that I'm not valued, but, um, you know, my contribution doesn't matter. It does, but not my contribution to society. It's my impact and the way that I feel about myself that will shine outward. So. Is that why you started your business? So, like, essentially, you went through that job experience. It wasn't good. Did in this is 2019? So it's like you know, there's not. And I would imagine you quit what 2020 or was it still 2019? Um, it was 2020 that that they terminated me. They terminated me. Okay, you didn't quit. Obviously, yeah. they terminated you. Okay, yeah. so and you decided to start your own business after that. Did you um, realize like, yo, it's, it's a wrap? Like, you know what? I can't do this for the rest of my life. Right. Um, I actually started a nonprofit with my ex-partner. Okay. And um, that is that was awesome. It was such a great experience. Um, what was the name of the nonprofit? Does it still exist? Yes, yeah, Steam Urban. Okay. Right. Steam Urban. Um, and so at the same time, I also started the Black Wall Street. Um, and so just Steam Urban is a nonprofit based on educational programming for Black and Brown students. And so with focusing on that, it allowed me to think about more what the Black Wall Street was really going to mean. Because at that time, I was really, and it was only two years ago, but I felt like I was way younger um, and just not as evolved um, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, just had a lot of healing to go through. And so I don't think you should um, pour into a business out of like an empty cup. And so I was pouring into that business um, and it, it's, it's thriving, you know, um, but I did end up separating myself and continuing to do, you know, my dharma, which is, uh, you know, my destiny um, because you can't do other people's dreams. Right. So um, with learning all of these things with steam urban and things like that, I was able to learn what I did want and what I didn't. Um, and I, what I did want was to work for myself because understanding like, yo, it was times where I didn't have no money, like no bread, but I was so happy. I'm like, come on, babe, let's get up and make smoothies. Like, <laughs> you know, like I didn't care. So I'm just like, yeah, I'll never want to, I don't never, ever, ever yeah. want to work for someone again. Yeah. Like that is just not it, you know? Yeah. So uh, when I did leave and started my, um, you know, finally put all the effort into my company, which was just last last year, 2021, is when I really started to go full full throttle with um the Black Wall Street. And I started to see a change in myself. I started to see my own confidence just build and understand that, you know, it's possible for me to work for myself. It's possible for me to not like really work, really just create. And what did you get your degree in? Psychology. Okay, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, I love people and how they think. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> but you, you, but you're a whole artist, and you know I yes. want to get into you know I yes. want to get into. All right, so can we talk about you know uh, the the brand itself and what you're offering? Yes. Um. So with the Black Wall Street, there's three initiatives. Mm -hmm. So first, the Black Wall Street is a company that provides um that develops creative initiatives to tackle social and environmental issues using the arts and philanthropy. And so um, the three initiatives are Black the Brand, which is what I have on right nice. now. Yes, Show it to the camera right yeah, here. Yeah, you know, that's what I got right on there. right now. Awesome right there. Yeah, my bracelets are also Black the Brand. Okay. Evil eye bracelets to ward off all that negative energy nice. in the world. 
little uh, crystal healing. You know, a little You know, we love crystal healing okay, here on the right? Podcast. You know, what <laughs> you know the vibes? Hell yeah. Yeah, so um, that's Black the Brand. And Black the Brand is um, an individualized approach to holistic healing, um, creating stimulating events and dope products. Um, also provide some services, but I don't promote that as much. I feel like people okay. just come directly to me with that. Okay. Um, and then... It's a more personal situation, if you will. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's a lot of word of mouth. Like, okay. people just know, like, oh, you did this? Can you do this for me? And I'm like, yeah, cool. Um, I'd like to take baby steps with certain things. I feel like with services, um, you promote it, and then you kind of have to live and die by it. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's on the website. You know, someone okay. sees it. It's like, And hey, what's the website? Blackthebrand.com, uh, B-L-A-K-T-H-E brand.com. Um, and then we have um, What's the Wave New Jersey, which is a collaborative news outlet. Um, I see that, yeah. But, but you only focus on positive news. Only positive news. I love that. Thank you. Oh, my God. I've seen so much terrible news lately on yeah. the Spanish stations, especially <laughs> she'll have Mom Duke's crib. I'm like, Yo, I can't do this, yeah. Mom. Like, stop. Get this out of your system. Yeah, like, um, I live with my grandparents right now, yeah. and so... I love them. Shout out to my grandparents. Um, that's beautiful. You yeah. know, entrepreneur and living with the with the folks. That's awesome. Yeah, I had to go home and I did have an apartment last year. I had to go home and restart because it's like gotcha. you got to sometimes start from scratch. Like, nah, let me, you know, yeah, recalibrate, recalibrate, and go out into the world for real the way I really want to do it. So I don't never got to come back. Yeah, <laughs> that's no, I thing, hear you. Yeah, you know? that's a fact. And I don't want to do it halfway. Um, but yeah, so my grandparents they watch the news a lot because they're older. And I just be like, oh, God, like, turn this off. Like you just said, like, I don't want to watch this. I don't want to see bombings or shootings or nothing. Like, I don't, uh, I don't want to. It's not that I don't care, but it's just like, I don't actually have to know this. You know, like, it's a lot of fear tactics in, in, um, in the news and media. And I don't like that. So with West Wave, New Jersey, my goal is to just really just spread love and positivity. Because, again, the Black Wall Street is be loving and kind. And so um, I want a bunch of initiatives, businesses, um, organizations just continuing to thrive under the Black Wall Street with the help of the Black Wall Street or owned by the Black Wall Street, either way. Um, and so with the West the Wave, that is also, you know, infused into that, um, the whole meaning behind that. And so, for example, it might be like, instead of saying that New Jersey is the most polluted state in America, which it is one of them, um, you could say... Here are 10 companies that are doing something against the pollution. By the way, you know, New Jersey is the most, one of the most polluted states. You know, help your state. I like how you frame the like angles. That. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I've learned from the news and media that, like, the way they use colloquialism and just take one thing and kind of pose it to you in a way that they want you to. They want you to be fearful. They want you to buy something. They want you to get a vaccine. Whatever way they want you to do. There's, whatever yeah, they want you to do. There's an agenda all yeah. day, every day. Yeah, but I got an agenda too. Uh, <laughs> but it's like, to. I'm going to use that yeah. same framework. Yeah. Why, you know, why reinvent the wheel? Yeah, facts. Use the yeah. same framework, but yeah. instead, it's all about loving and kindness. So you can't say, I'm an evil person for making you you know, love people. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to say, that. like, no, you made me. They will. Right. You made me love people. It's America. They'll find a way. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. But it's just like, that's the type of stuff that you could just kind of knock off your yeah. shoulder. Like, yo, like, if you don't want to love people, then go ahead and get out of my face anyway, for real. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what What's the Wave is about. And then I have Everything Green, which is an ideology, a mindset, a philosophy um, about connecting your mind and body to just continuously reach new levels of consciousness. Uh, everything green is with three E's. So the E's stand for equitable, essential, effective. Um, just to kind of fact check yourself, like, am I doing this? Is this fair to other people? That's equitable. Essential is, do I need this? Is Am I doing this for greed? Why am I doing this? Why am I providing this? And effective is like, does this even work? So that can go with anything. That can go with your diet. That can go with your beliefs. That can go with a relationship. That can go with a job. That can go with a product you're making. So everything green is a lifestyle. Just checking yourself, like, before you wreck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that actually was the first like little spark of entrepreneurship I had. Um, I thought about this um, three years, four years ago now, 2018, and I just never really pursued it. And so now I'm finally, you know, tapping in, going to be offering like different sustainable consulting services and just capturing nature from an urban lens. Because um, when you look at nature documentaries and stuff, you never see like the hood or like urban um, ecosystems. Um, But that's nature too. Like, you know, so... (laughs) 
So that's all a Some part of that. Some of it forced nature, but it's still nature. Right, yeah. exactly. So that's that's the Black Wall Street in a nutshell. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's three different three different tiers. Black the brand is individual. Um, What's the wave is communal, and everything green is global. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Shout out to the you know to the B L A K. Okay, very good. <laughs> that's a fact. And you know, I want to ask you about this actually because you know we're talking about wellness. We're talking about you know you know ways and level of consciousness when it comes to being kind to one another, which includes being kind to the to the environment right. being kind you know to, to you know not only human beings to other other cultures you know the ecology whatever the right. case may be so i want to know why do you believe that combining art and wellness is a good vehicle for social change within you know the black community and all communities um i think that's well not think i know that art and wellness is a is a vehicle for social change because art is a form of communication and so if you have a good intention behind what you're creating, um, people will be impacted whichever way they will. But regardless of what they feel, they're at least feeling something. And so a lot of the issues in the world is that people aren't feeling anything. They're walking around not feeling nothing. They don't know how to express their emotions. They don't know what they feel. They don't know what they even need to heal from. They don't understand that they've even gone through trauma. They don't understand that when they walk outside and they see garbage on their street, that's trauma. And that's a small thing, but that's traumatizing. Um, but it's little things like that, um, that art can help you express that and help you feel. So when you start to feel, you start to be a little bit more clear, a little bit more in touch with yourself. Like, hey, I actually don't like that. Um, and so that's one form just for art. And then for wellness, um, there's eight dimensions of wellness. So there's um, financial, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, environmental, sexual, I might have missed one. Sounds like the seven chakras. <laughs> Very similar. A lot Very of these <laughs> things are similar, right? Totally. Yeah, all of these things are like the awesome. same thing. Yeah, yeah. So with that, um, that kind of touches on every single thing that, yes. you know, yeah, in that life. That breakdown was no joke. <laughs> right. And so combining that with art is just expressing yourself and highlighting those things um, through art or vice versa. And so for me, for example, um, art painting in particular helps me see more about myself. So I'll paint something and I'm like, oh, wow, I must have been kind of angry when I did that part. Um, and it might be months later, but I'll notice like certain textures in my paintings or certain colors I chose to use. Like it could be like a, a you know, a pastel colored thing. And then next thing you know, I'm like, putting some harsh like red or orange. It's like, what was that emotion that I was feeling? And there's psychology to colors um and so each color has its own meaning behind it and again going back to our instinct instinct like uh, human nature we understand more than we think so you're getting this color and you don't realize this is what's you know attracting you to this but maybe you're feeling like really passionate right now that's why you chose red or maybe you're feeling really sad right now that's why you chose blue or feeling really calm that's why you chose like a light purple um or maybe maybe you're feeling really powerful and that's why you chose like royal purple but understanding those things and connecting it to your wellness um it, it is a vehicle for social change because that's all we need to know is how we feel once we understand how we feel, we understand how other people feel um, or we can empathize with them. And with those two together, I just feel like we're listening to each other more because having a conversation is not always so easy. But someone can stand in front of your painting or somebody can listen to you, um, you know, recite your poetry or someone can wear your bag that has a statement and understand like, nah, this thing needs to change. Like you said, um, like there's a bag. I forgot who's the designer, but it's like protect black women like that is art. But that's also wellness because that's social socially. You know, that's a social problem that they're addressing within their art. It's the same type of thing. Um, so I have a shirt that says um, I am light. And so someone might see that and be like, you know what? I'm light, too. I like that. You know, and so walking around with your with your fit on, people just reading it and understanding that message. So those two combined, art and wellness, is like a powerhouse to change the world for real. Um, and it's not just with clothes, but it's so many different things. It's movies, it's music, it's painting, it's poetry, it's books, it's everything. But when you're when you're creating spaces within art to express a message that that addresses a real issue or something that you feel needs 
of revamping even. It might not be an issue, but it's like, mm, this is a little traditional, like education, for example. It needs some revamping. You're able to really be that catalyst of social change, which is a vehicle because you can get from, you're on this highway, but you could become that exit, you know? So, yeah. Why abstract art? Because you love abstract art. Yeah. You feel like that drives the point home as well. Why? Yeah. Um, because it makes people think. They, they have to actually sit there and think about, again, what it makes them feel. I always want to make people feel and go deeper because I feel like a lot of things are very shallow. And I used to be scared of that part of myself when I was younger because I feel like I was that kid that asked adults questions I wasn't supposed to ask. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I see someone crying over their boyfriend. I'm that young. And I'm like, why don't you just leave? Don't yeah. you deserve better than that? And they're like, yo, you're like 10. Like, get out of here. <laughs> and I'm like... Well, <laughs> Oprah said, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I always feel like I always had like a, I don't know, a more intuitive spirit. And so with abstract art, it, I feel like my spirit is more so moving through me. And so when I paint, it allows people who might not be as um, intuitive or tapped into themselves to think like, what does this make me feel? Or what is this? And so even having to put yourself in my shoes to think, what was I thinking or feeling um, well, what does this mean to me allows you to expand your consciousness because now you're actually thinking outside of yourself, which is not really thinking at this point because you're, you're, your brain is not creative. It's your spirit. And so having to operate from that space allows you to get closer to that. yourself. Your brain is not creative. It's your spirit. Yeah. I'm about to put that on a t-shirt. Right. I'm about Deja. to say. <laughs> Hold on. We're going to have to collab. <laughs> Deja, so how do you feel about, you know, um, people such as like Candace Owens? You know what I mean? That, that you know, sometimes comes off like she has a lack of empathy. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And they, kind of like, you know, attacks minority communities for, you know, being lazy and, you know, not being able to move forward, you know, and focusing too much on their drama, trauma. And she said, you know, they, she thinks that everybody's like waiting for a handout type of situation. Um, she's an interesting woman. Um, but I believe that... No, I mean, I, I like, I mean, you know, I, I like, I respect all, you know, like me. I, I, I'm in the media, so I have to respect people doing it. You know, yeah. however it is they're doing it. Yeah. And especially when they're, co when, when they're articulate and they're coherent and concise about their opinions. But, you know, I want to know what, you know, people in, in, you know, all what they think about this kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, you know I what understand. I'm That's yeah. why I said she's an interesting yeah, woman, right? like, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. Um, it's funny, I was just having a conversation similar to this uh, when I was showing my work actually at um, OTW's... Um, at the 2 case Speak Up series. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was having a conversation when I was looking at my art with someone about how some people, this is their first time here on Earth. Um, I feel myself, this is definitely not my first time. There's no way that I'm this innovative and this creative and see all of these things and am able to have this this dialogue with almost everybody and have them understand something that's super abstract and make it very simple and understand you know them understand it or say one sentence that changes someone's whole perspective on their life so i don't i don't take all the credit for that i believe that i've been here a few times a lot of times um and some people we have to understand this is their first time so i feel like that's what breeds like narcissists and people who lack empathy, they just don't get it because they never been here. This is their first time. They're like, just get over it. Yeah. Just do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> like, I, I really feel that. I really legitimately feel that. Um, and it took me a while to kind of figure that out. But I, yeah. I feel like I cracked the code with that. Ever since I kind of started living by that, like, oh, this must be your first time here. You're full of life hacks, you know? You're full of life hacks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's her. it's probably her first time here, yeah. or second or third or something, because she doesn't get it. Someone like that, um, and I don't want to say someone like that, but someone who expresses things like that with no regard for how it's going to hit to people and how it's going to make other people feel, um, they can't possibly know. I don't believe that humans are innately bad. I believe that people are literally just ignorant sometimes. And that ignorance can be because this is their first time here. They just don't know. Like, for example, um, you and I will know, like, well, I can't just keep drinking every day. I probably become an alcoholic. But that's only because we done seen it. We know it. Even before you know, like no one has to ever tell you. You just know, like, I'm not I can't do that every day, even if it feels good when you do it. Someone else, I feel like their first time here, they like, yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing this because it's cool. <laughs> and now you stuck. <laughs> 
and now you're stuck. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. Man. So <laughs> it, it just it's a new perspective. And so certain people need more guidance and more help yeah. because they just need help navigating their lives. And Candace is a very brilliant woman, but she just uses it so recklessly, which makes me feel like this has to be your first time here. And even if someone doesn't believe that, I feel like it's an easier way to live your life to just write them off as a good person that don't know what they're doing than to walk around thinking they bad and really hateful. I love it. I love that perspective. It explains a lot of my buffoonery, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so thank you very much. You're man. welcome. <laughs> I'm going to use that, you know, my sister, you know, because we argue a lot. But I like, guess my first time here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, I didn't know. Sorry, sis. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, the, the podcast is sponsored by uh, OTW Threads, Be Out of This World. Um, also, Attitude on 10, your place to start getting over your trauma. And uh, folks, if you want to know how to build a, a you know, professional podcast setup, hit the affiliate links down though, provided by uh, your truly angel of words. We continue now with the very insightful, <laughs> intuitive Deja. And uh, I want to talk about, let's talk about the event you got going on on May 28th. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah, we had the son got here. Yeah. And you're the person <laughs> that she was mentioning that she's collaborating with. What has that experience been like so far, you know, setting up this collaboration with uh, the son guy? Um, first of all, I love son guy. I love Sunny. That's my, that's my boo. I love her. Um, so... I reached out to her like uh, in the summertime and I was just, I saw her art and I'm like, yo, she's mad fire. And I just felt like we were similar. Like I just saw it and I'm like, yeah. Um, at that time I was meditating a lot. So I was really like diving into my intuition. It's like, if I felt connected to someone, I didn't feel like it was weird to just reach out. Like, Hey, I think you're cool. Let's hang out. <laughs> so I did that. I was like, Hey, um, would you be interested in collaborating? And she's like, yeah, I'm on vacation. When I get back, I'm gonna hit you up. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And so we literally went on a picnic and then from there it was like on and popping. We did like a digital collab, um, with the draft. And then after that, we've been working on this piece for about, uh, six months. I hear it's as big as this table. That's what I heard. Yeah, it's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> bigger than this. It's bigger. It's bigger than this table. It's, it's dope. Uh, I definitely got to pull up. It's, yeah, it's, no, May 28th. Yeah, right? May 28th. Let's get into it. You know? Okay. You know, we, we're promoting it right now. What's yeah, happening? What's going to happen May 28th? So you're collaborating with some guy. You got a big piece coming out, but there's other yes. stuff going on. So what's yes. going on? So first, the um the art show is the Midday Getaway. Okay. Um, We did, Black the Brand did its first Midday Getaway back in the fall. I did my own solo art show. And so this time, and moving forward, I want to continue to collaborate with other artists that have uh, goals and missions that are aligned and also be able to pour into them. Um, and so at this midday getaway, it's really an experience for you to be able to let go, you know, have fun, get high on life. The garden is Rabbit Hole Farm, Newark, which is um, off of Avon Avenue in Newark, New Jersey. Um, it's like an enchanted garden. It's so beautiful. The people who run it are like the calmest people I've ever met in my life, even calmer than me. And I feel like I'm pretty, I'm pretty calm. You seem pretty chill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're calmer than me. Like wow. they're very like... You know, like they're like they, Zen, they're you know very Zen. They're, they're they're on the Akashic Records level. You no, know? literally, <laughs> literally, uh, really dope people, loving people. Um, and so we're gonna have our art unveiled there. Then we're also gonna have some painting activities, and um, we're gonna have some conversation around our piece. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a vibe. We'll also have well. I can't. I can't tell y'all that. I'm not going to say Come on, you got to get us I to go there. I can't say that. Is it going to be some... tickets? Are you going to yeah, be? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's that's be what I'm saying. So you got to let us know why we're buying tickets. Yeah. If well, you don't mind. <laughs> I mean, we're going to have some food, but that's all, all right. I can say for right now. All right, cool, cool. So, <laughs> the food's going to be good. Um, right, the cool. space is all no harm, no kill. So okay. um, it's no, like, meat. At, at all in this okay, place. Okay, yeah, because you're vegan. Yes, I'm vegan. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, it's no meat at this place. There's no cursing. There's no smoking, no drinking. So the place is very sacred and purified, which I love. Wow. Um, so it's a really safe space. You know, back in the days, I'd be like, no, I'm not going there. I'm right. Like, yeah, I need this in my right. life. Right. <laughs> it's like, you need that. Take this little four hours. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Get into it. I you love know? it. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's okay, that's It's going to be dope. So the tickets are going to drop. Honestly, they're supposed to drop yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, life yeah. be getting in the way a little bit. Yes, so know. they're probably going to either drop today or tomorrow. Either way, okay. um, y'all going to get into it. It's going to be on your pages, right? Yeah, I absolutely. It's going to be all over IG. Like, okay, it's going to cool. be on both our personal pages um, and then also our um, respective business pages. So Art by Sun God and Black the Brand. Um, so, yeah. It's dope. Y'all should probably just turn y'all uh, post notifications on. Yo, for real. To be honest. That's dope. Because it's going to sell right. out. 
For sure. Now, who have you invited? Any special guests be there? Uh, like, what's the vibe going to be like crowd-wise, you think? Um, It's, well, I feel like everybody that really supports us, to be honest, um, and this is why I'm encouraging people to hurry up because there's people that um, are really into the art world, designers, um, you know, artists, philosophers, things of that nature that want to come out and are coming out. But um, you got to get your tickets fast. Because yeah, this is like a networking event as well, I would imagine, right? Um, wanna... It could be, for sure, because yeah. we're definitely both real fire. And so, yeah. you know, like, there's going to be some heavy hitters there. So definitely a space to be able to get connected and talk to other people, get stimulated, look at our art, um, share our art, um, and then just connect with other people. Um, I feel like both of us have a really loving aura so the people who come support us will only come with that with that energy with that vibe um so it'd be dope to even come and you know mingle a little bit with people will you be selling your brand there because i know you have these beautiful tote bags like you know these luggage yes, bags and stuff like yes. that all that stuff will be available you know will you be also there you know showcasing more of the art not just what you made for that specific day yeah we're gonna have um individual art pieces that we're also showing um and then they will also be for sale and then we'll also um have some other pieces so we're gonna have some pieces that are connected to the piece we made together and then we'll have some individual pieces as well i don't know how much stuff from black the brand i'm gonna have there um as of yet because i want everything to be like really synergistic you know everything flowing going with the flow but there'll be so many opportunities to copy some black the brand you could go on a website right now www.blackthebrand.com to cop so you know you know (laughs) you gotta plug it in got to got to (laughs) now um you know, I want to ask you about female entrepreneurship because it, it, it's really on the rise. You yeah. Know what I mean? 51% of new business owners are females. How does that make you feel when you hear those kind of statistics that women out here, you know, doing Getting big it. things? Yeah. I mean, last night, for example, the first boxing match ever headlined by two ladies yeah. at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, because we, we're that. Like, yeah. I just feel like um, those stats just show what has been happening. It's just actually... You know, we have the space and the economy and the society going back to, again, like our human nature. We've been that. We've been leading. Uh, We've been creating everybody, like literally creating people. (laughs) (laughs) Like the people who even the men who changed the world, like were created by a woman who had to nurture them and take care of them and take care of their body in order. You know, so I feel like those stats are just like a modern day representation. Do you feel like men lose sight of that sometimes? Oh, absolutely. One hundred thousand percent. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but that's why I only surround myself around men who understand. So yeah. then they they understand. Like I'm not asking you to put me on some type of pedestal. I'm a, I'm asking you to under like respect your role, and respect mine. Because I feel like if you're balanced, you know, with your yin and your yang, your your masculine, your feminine, we straight. Like you know, it doesn't have to be these weird societal roles. But I mean roles as far as you know, understand where you fall in line in this human uh so, not even society, this human race. Period. Um, but yeah, I feel like those stats are just showing what has been happening just like in an economy type of way, <laughs> you know. Does it give you goosebumps though sometimes when you hear it? Um, not, I, I can't say it does. Because um, you expect it kind of. Yeah. I I'm, I'm a little bit detached from the whole male, female thing because yeah. it's just like, all right, it's, you know, <laughs> it's, we respectfully like. Yeah. It, the Don't only speak reason, on it. Yeah, yeah the only yeah. reason that it hasn't been that way before is just because legally, like, the pay gap and just, like, we weren't able to do the, certain things. If we had these laws the same time men had the laws, child, please. We would've, <laughs> that would have been, like, 82% of females are. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> so it doesn't really surprise me. It doesn't even give me goosebumps because it's like, I know that already. I feel it. So. So I'm guessing you're not a fan of Kevin Sam. No, <laughs> absolutely not. He's a he's a cornball. I'm sorry. He's a cornball. And I don't usually even use names for people. Yeah, you but don't that, use a that nomenclature one, like that, you know? Yeah, that, that right there, he's an interesting individual. <laughs> yeah, he'd be bugging out like, nah. Yeah. Now you're doing a lot. You have some found, you know, you're doing you got you're working with the JLH Social Impact Fund, correct? Well, I applied for their Oh, you um, applied for the oh, Yeah, I applied okay. for their So what's grant. going on with that? So I'm actually just waiting for a response. Because you know, as a business owners, you know, obviously there's a lot of grants out there. You know, yeah. can you speak on that? Like starting a business and financing it? Well, starting a business, one, you gotta be ready for it. Um, and I don't How so? Mentally, you have to be ready. 
to start a business. And if you want to be a full time entrepreneur, that's a whole different thing. Definitely got to have some somebody that's by your side encouraging you just on on the strength of like they really fuck with you. Like they really can you curse on here? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they really fuck with you. So like they really got to want to pour into you and be like, yo, like you doing it wrong. Like and not doing it wrong is in like you're bad or like this is. You know, but more so like, hey, did you ever think about how the type of music you listen to? That's not really going to help you. You saying those type of things, it's not going to help. Like your brain is not in the space to be able to be a leader of a business. Like that's not how you you need to be thinking. Um, so, yeah, like I feel like there's certain things you have to have in place as far as far as your support of yourself and then your external support um, because it begins within. So, yeah, so that's one. But then just having a business in general and financing it you got to honestly get a mentor like um okay you suggest people get a mentor if you yeah, want to start their own business i have a bunch of mentors um because i can't do this by myself you know i don't claim to be able to just do everything by myself i do learn a lot by myself i can't say that and nobody's going to just teach you everything they know but that's why i have multiple people around me to like yo you ever did this or um, do you know how to do this? You know, and just having different layers of those people around you. Like you got to have some peers that you're able to teach. You got to have some peers that are teaching you. You got to have some peers that is both sided um, because you're able to see how you're evolving as a leader. Like I feel like everyone does have the ability to lead because you you have to re- lead in your respective you know space. So even if you're not the leader all the way at the top, you got to lead the people right behind you or the person beside you sometimes y'all might have to you might be in a space where sometimes you lead some people are always have to lead um and so I I feel like with that that goes right into the finances because your finances are only going to come when you know what you want to do and what you're trying to do so with the JLH social impact fund um I I, you probably saw the video yes yeah so I had to do a video along with the very extensive grant that I had to write (laughs) um it's a $20,000 grant that I applied for back in February. And so they actually just reached out to me the other day to tell me like they're um, going to be announcing the people who are the recipients in a couple of weeks. I think you're going to win. Yeah, me too. I'll put an Thank energy you. Out Thank there. you. Put, put that energy out there. Out there. Like, all right, it's is already there any mine. voting involved to me? Like, you know what I mean? How does I wish. that work? All nah. right, well, if you're voting on or you're in control of who wins, you know. <laughs> I mean, right. yeah, listen to the podcast. I think right. you're giving to, money to, to the right person. Them. You know what I mean? Yes, <laughs> right. let's tag them. You know? I had to tag them. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it. it's really dope. Um, okay. And speaking of that, I really, it's funny you even asked me about that. I've really been super tapped in just to, into my intuition and my higher self that the other day I was realizing, I'm like, wait, they said that um, they were going to announce recipients the last week of April. And so I'm like, hold on. Yeah. Hello, I go to the Instagram, right, yeah. nobody announced. So I'm yeah. like, well, I didn't lose. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Well, I hate when they do that too. Like, I've, I've, I've like, I, I apply for things and only, like, I never get like a response. Like, we already picked someone. Like, what's up with yeah, that? Yeah, I don't know. But that's why I was just like, I hit up, it was two uh, Instagrams. It's Fund yeah. Black Founders. So for all the entrepreneurs out there, definitely follow their IG, Fund Black Founders, dope IG, and the JLH Social Impact Fund as well. Um, they're really dope to get into because they always are showing different opportunities for black founders to get their business um, funded. But the fun black founders had actually reached out to me and said, hey, someone tagged you on our page. We would love for you to apply to this grant. That's how I found out about the JLH Social Impact Fund. And so um, I was like, word, I, I applied. And so I reached out to them on IG the other day, like, hey, um, I haven't heard anything back. When will you guys be announcing the recipients? And they still didn't open my DM yet. But um, the same day, like a couple hours later, I got an email from the people who run the JLH Social Impact Fund and said, hi, Deja, we're a little, you know, we're going a little later with the um, going through the applications and we're going to, you know, announce recipients on this date. And I'm like, wow, was this like God telling me like you got it? Because they didn't even fund black founders and JLH are two different companies. Yeah. And so for them to reach out after I just reached out yeah, to them, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm lit. Yeah, that'll <laughs> so, be great. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm tapped in OD. So. Yeah, I'm speaking into existence. No, well, I mean I'm a big believer in that. Just speaking in, why not? Right, <laughs> like, like you don't got nothing yeah, to lose. Like my thing is like you know I'm always like yo, don't speak nothing into existence that you ain't ready for. But right. if you feel like you're mentally ready and you're prepared for whatever it is you want, yo, you gotta say it every day. Yeah. Like a, make it a mantra. If yeah, you have to, type no, for of deal, sure, for you know? sure. And you can't say I will. You gotta say like. You already have it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you got to yeah, like, live your life in abundance. Yeah. In like, yeah. I'm so glad that I won this $20,000 from the JLH Social Impact Fund. Like, you got to say stuff <laughs> like that. And then God be like, oh, you already got it. Word. Because again, <laughs> yeah. time is an illusion. You just got to yeah. align yourself to that space. I agree. 
and you're going to get it because mm-hmm. you just got once you align yourself, it's like word. It's so good, know, it has to come. You know what you're going to do with those funds where you're going to be invested in? Because I know you got a studio. Let's talk about that. Right? Or you were curating or something. Because I remember the last time when we met, we yeah. were talking about this, you know, dope podcasting studio. And yes. things like, so what's going on yeah. with that? So it's not my studio, okay. but I work with Become Media okay. Studio. Um, okay. The owner is Amir Natson. Really what's dope. the name of the studio again? I'm sorry. Become Media Studio. Become Media it's Studio. It's in Irvington, New Jersey. Irvington, New Jersey. Yeah, Copy. it's um, owned by Amir Natson. Really dope person. He's shout a, out to him. Yeah, shout out to Amir. He's a celebrity chef, um, pastor, entrepreneur, mogul, writer, like all this stuff. He's really dope. Sounds like somebody dope that, that we can get on the podcast. Can you yeah, that yeah, he's Maybe. dope. He's dope. Maybe. <laughs> you got to come to Become. That would oh, be dope. Oh, yeah, definitely. That would be yes, dope. So. Yeah, I we bet. could set that up for sure. I bet. Um, he's a really dope person to interview. Um, and so I've been working with um, Become Media Studio, just honestly, right now, learning the different equipment and really getting the team together. Um, and so it's really an exciting experience because I feel like all of my opportunities just fall into my lap. Um, and so we're ch- we're just figuring out what works best as far as like, you know, um, the studio and what the community needs. So that's what we're doing right now. But definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to have some big, big things on the way <laughs> for sure. So who do you follow? Like, you like know on Instagram? I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Because like, uh, like, you know, I feel like people forget them that because, you know, I always hear. People complaining about all oh, this, all there's all this ratchet stuff and this that. But my thing is like, no, you're following the wrong things. Yeah. You gotta change the algorithm. You, yeah. Like the way, same way you change your social uh uh structure in real life, you can do that in the cyberspace as well. So who do you follow to, you know, have such a, you know, grounded like perspective like you seem to have? I follow a lot of um well, each one of my Instagrams has its own curated following gotcha. so that it makes sense. Um, but on my personal page, I follow lots of artists. Um, I follow a lot of like um, higher perspective type pages where they're, you know, saying um, May 1st, you know, today is a day of blah, 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 blah. So every day there's a new um, message and it's not astrology or anything, which I do believe in astrology. Don't get me wrong, but it's not astrology because um, I just believe that if I see a message just for me. And so if I find a page is reputable and they're not posting like bullshit in the in-between because some of these like healing pages and stuff, they're like weird. Like they'll post something and say, you know, a, a cool message in the next post is like they're promoting Fashion Nova sale or something. So it's really weird. I mean, that doesn't make sense. You know, that's like shameless stuff. You know? Yeah. It's like you're using one niche to get people to buy on another. Exactly. Niche. It's like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Which, which is why I don't like. So you have to be careful about that. But I yeah. follow pages like that. I follow a lot of nature pages. So gotcha. like I'll just see flowers on my TL, clouds and stuff like that. I like to immerse myself in nature as much as I can. Um, so that type, those type of pages also, um, young entrepreneurs, I follow a lot of 25 year old millionaires, 24 year old, 23 year old, whatever I'm 24. So I like to follow people who it seems, it feels and seems realistic for me. Um, not people who, and it's not, I don't want to say I don't follow people who are older than me because I do, but it's not that it's, um, unrealistic to look at people that are older, but they had a whole different life. Like there was a whole different world when they were 20. So if they've been doing this for 10 years, yeah, the economy was different. Yeah, it's not relatable. It's not relatable. To what you're relatable. dealing with right now. Yeah, so you can give me this advice, but it's like, when was the last time you actually had to get funding for your business that had no money? In you didn't. In 2022. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you fact. did that in 2010. As a young person, you know, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you did that in 2010 when they were kind of giving things out. Like, yeah. it's very different. It's not to say it was easy, but it definitely was way different. Yeah, it was a different situation yeah. overall. Yeah, exactly. So I follow people who are like me. Um, I follow a lot of uh, creatives, um, people who are doing things that I aspire to do or people are doing things that are similar, um, just so I can get more inspiration. Um, I have There's this quote, I forgot who said it, but, <laughs> and my friend judged me for, has, for saying this one time, but it's, it's called Steal Like a Great Artist. So the way that I interpret it is that like, you don't steal other people's stuff, yeah. but like, no art is new. No, you get inspired by things that are around you. Nothing you is get. new. Exactly. Like, even like this is Basquiat, right? Yes. Someone Who, by the way, how do you feel? I mean, real quickly, anybody that ever mentions him on the pod, I got to ask this question. How do you feel about the, you know, I feel like there's a little bit of bastardization of, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that they're making him relevant, but I feel like it's everywhere now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel they're like, overdoing it. I feel like it's respective, respectfully, it's been long enough for him to not have yeah. been here. And I feel like it's a, a beautiful time just simply because, like, yeah, 
he's everywhere, but he should have been. Like, there's so many black children, including myself. Like, I was in art school, not art school, art class in elementary school learning about Andy Warhol. I had no idea who Basquiat was. And he was his contemporary. They were out at the same time. Right. They were chilling together. You yeah. Know I mean? like, and in many ways, Andy Warhol yeah. even exploited Basquiat. So, you know. Stopping the exploitation and starting the inspiration and celebration of his life, I think it's beautiful. So, okay. um, and a lot of these these things are actually created by his family and people who actually have like good intentions. Yeah. It's not them just exploiting him. Yeah. So I think that's a good thing too. Because yeah, I hope at, I hope that's what's going on. I haven't you know I haven't had the time to actually go in to find out where you know the genesis and what's really happening behind the scenes when it comes to that. But I just hope that's what's happening. Yeah, because like, even even this here, it says it's like his actual logo okay cool. you get what i'm saying gotcha. like you can't use that without his estate saying you gotcha. can use that all right, so, that is so all, all of his stuff has good his name on it which is dope it's nothing like oh it's a just a shirt relief, you know? yeah <laughs> like good. yeah so that's really dope yeah because i hope it's going to you know i hope it's going to the right direction is all i'm yeah. saying you know yeah. what i'm saying because yeah. you know this world can be fickle <laughs> yes it, it definitely can the world is a little flawed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, everyone, just letting you know that the podcast is sponsored by OTW Threads. Be out of this world. Also, attitudeon10.com. It is not a fugazi uh, healing place. This is, this is a place <laughs> that is official. Word. Actually, they were there. You you met you met the founder of Attitude on Oh, yes, 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 I did. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my sponsors yeah. here. So, yeah, awesome. so you met her. You know that yeah, she's, she's legit. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, she's All right, legit. Cool. So, you know, she's Attitude. fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, your place to, you know, for trauma and resilience. You know, we're official. And, uh, if you want to build up your own podcast, you need to, a consultation, you need to have a conversation, whatever the case may be, you want to do this. You need the equipment. You want to know how it's done. The, the links are right there below. All right. So just reach out to us. All our information is there. And, uh, you know, we'll get you started on the path to put your voice out there, you know, about the passions that you have. Now, Deja, we have reached the point of the podcast where it's time to play five words. With Angel. All right. On Five Words with Angel, I'm going to give you a word, phrase, or question sometimes. And you're going to give me the first word, phrase, or thought that comes to your head. Are you ready? All right. Yeah. All right. Let's go. The first word is, what do you think about when you think about Purple Sister? Damn. <laughs> it's not damn. <laughs> um, my mom. Okay. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And I'm going to ask you about that because we have a similar thing. So we'll, we'll, that's going to be next on five. After five was a word with angels, so don't go anywhere. Okay. Um, <laughs> the next word is uh, favorite philosopher. Because I see that you like, uh, you seem to like philosophy. You have great philosophies yourself. Who's your favorite? Do you have a favorite mm, philosopher? I don't really have a favorite. Okay. Not really. Mine's is Mai Zedong, by the way, guys. <laughs> 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 Big into Chinese philosophy myself, you know? Yeah, I do like Chinese philosophy. It's pretty dope. Like Taoism. Right? Yeah, anyway. I'm all about the golden mean. Yeah. You know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The, um, the next word is procreate. Mm. The app procreate. What comes to your head when you think about the app procreate? Birth. Birth. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. The next word is veganism. What comes to your head when you think about veganism? Mm. Animals. Now, I gotta ask this because, you know, this bothered me. You know, I went on a I went on an Instagram rant. My mother got upset. My mother doesn't like me ranting on it. I mean, I don't call it <laughs> ranting, but it's basically, you know, I'm passionate about a situation. Like, I don't like to do a live or I don't like to post myself like straight raw dog unless I'm passionate <laughs> about like what, what you're ha saying, what has just transpired. And the Chris, the, the Chris Rock, Will Smith situation was, was a big deal for me. Uh -huh. like, these are guys that I grew up idolizing and wanting to reach the level of success. They were people that I looked up to. Mm -hmm. What did you think about that situation? Uh, I think Will Smith, like, damn, yeah, man. Like, that made me sad. Like, it did make me sad. I was like, damn. Like, it was too tear for me, right? Like, the uninvolved me <laughs> was thinking, well, he shouldn't have said that. And then the other side was just like, yo, you just embarrassed yourself. You embarrassed your wife. You embarrassed, like, you know, your whole legacy. You embarrassed, you embarrassed yourself. Um, and you're going to get dragged 
regardless of people even believe that he deserved it or not, like you didn't actually have to do it. There's many times that people are like, you deserve to get slapped in the face right now, but you can't actually walk up to the person and slap them in the face. You could just like say it in your head if that's what you need to do. For me, I just like, you know, say fuck it. But he, you know, at first I even thought it was a joke. But until he started yelling from the state, from the yes, seats. And I was like, what... oh, this is not a joke because he yeah. don't even have a microphone. Yeah. Like, this is not this is not a joke. So I felt I felt disturbed by just the reactions from the public, though, because I do feel like at the same time, there's no empathy for the fact that, like, this is a regular human who might just be tired of people just messing with him. And just like his wife is going through a hard time in her life. And I even heard people on TMZ talking about how alopecia is not that serious. And so he shouldn't have got that mad, but it's like, you don't know what it did to her. Um, and then especially as black women, we always are ridiculed for our hair, whether we have it long, straight, curly, purple, white, whatever, always ridiculed or commented or touched. So um, for her to be going through that space in her life and have to be there in a room full of white people for lack of a better word and he sits up there and makes a joke I don't think that was funny at all even the fact that people say that G.I. Jane was like attractive and people wanted her it doesn't matter she's not G.I. Jane like that wasn't funny to me so there's two tier I don't know Chris Rock is very how are you on comedy evolved. because like your 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 perspective you know what I'm saying from what I've seen and you know heard from you today I don't think it caters to comedy though right? nah. I, you're not a big fan of comedy because I feel like words are words you said what you said yeah. that's not funny like I, I'm the person that like, like I, I totally disagree with your perspective, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna be honest. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. I gotta keep it a buck, but yeah. you know, I I like to listen to the other side. So yeah, great. like I yeah. Mm -hmm. I um I'm the person that like people they know, like certain friends. Like yeah. don't bring me around them, they play too much. Okay. But like I will say, yeah. initially when I heard it, I'm like, he deserved everything he got type of vibe. But gotcha. then it was just like uh it just sucks. Like, I just, I don't like how it went down. I don't gotcha. like none of that. You so. don't like to see stuff like that. Yeah, no, I think it was just wild. Like, I mean, he really shouldn't have did that, but he did it. But then it's just like, damn, y'all got to drag him, though. I don't even think about, I don't know how Chris Rock feels. Like, yeah. I, I it's, it took me a long time to even think, like, damn, I didn't even think about, you know, Chris Rock in this whole situation. That was embarrassing for him. Like, you're standing on stage and get slapped by, you know, someone who is influential, if not just as influential as you. Um, and he is a comedian, so, like, I guess it has to still be some room for that. I don't know. How do you feel about it? Go to my Instagram. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in my archives, though. You got to go to the archives. One, se to one sentence. I, the, my, my, okay. um, I was disappointed. I don't like, I didn't like the optics. If I was going to say, I didn't like the optics. Yeah. You know, it's a show that, that I've been watching my whole life. You know, they've been there before. They know how the what the routine is, you know. They, you know, for the first time ever, there was a lot of people getting noticed that weren't weren't normally getting noticed, mm -hmm. you know, on that on in that platform. Um, and you know, it was being run by someone of color for the first time in the history of that of that program. You know what I mean? I just felt like it was it, all that was in bad taste. He was laughing, he was laughing, and then went by. You know, he was laughing and then got upset because she got upset. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it was okay with you till she got upset. Yeah, until he realized, yeah, like, yeah, well, I'm going to have to go home and get in yeah, trouble. Yeah, but but that's my thing, you know? Yeah. And then after that, it just, like, goes way deeper than that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Unhealthy relationships and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not in their, in their household. I could just, you know, make an assumption. But I just, I thought it was bad optics. Yeah, I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay, and that was five words with angels. Possible LTW threats attitude hey. on com. Got a little <laughs> deep, you know. Um, <laughs> Real quick. But um, I want to talk about uh, the nature of of uh, fashion summer program because you have yeah. an internship going on right now. Is that through a school? Like, how's that? You know, how's that going down? So the nature of fashion summer program is a free sustainable fashion design program that I curated through Black the Brand. It's going to also be at Rabbit Hole Farm Newark, which okay. is the same garden that I'm going to be doing the art show in with Sunny. Huh. Um, and so that starts July 12th. Very excited about that. We are still looking for artists and sponsors for um, vegan or plant-based lunches, um, supplies, things of that nature. So 
hit me up. All right, um, well, I'll make sure I post that clip as well so that people see it. Because I know some people in the restaurant, I mean, I know a lot of people in the restaurant field that spent 17 years there. So, oh, okay, good. Yeah, I might be able to help you out there. Hopefully, yeah. we have enough time. It is already May. But, yeah, it's you know, May, but you know, it's the end of May, May 28th, right? It's the event. That, it's that, the event, right, but cool. the, um, the nature of fashion isn't yeah. until July. Twelve, so like get some time. All right, so the nature of okay, so that's that where situation is July twelfth. Right, right, that's where you need the the the, the plant based lunches and things Why? like that. Cool. So oh, we have so, enough time. There yeah, go. yeah, All we right, got right. some time. We got All some right, time. Cool. There you so go. yeah, if you're listening, do what you got to do. All right, so I created that. Um, so students will spend four weeks in the garden, um, learning about their impact as consumers. We're gonna have different designers coming. Actually, Yaya of OTW is gonna be there. Yes. Um, we shout have, out to her, you know. Right, shout out to her. It's my cousin. Oh, really? <laughs> it sure is. Oh, dope. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she'll be there. Um, we also have someone else. Um, her name is Mahadia. She is a sustainable fashion designer. Yeah. She's really dope. Sunny is gonna be there. Oh. We have Dante from Four Struggling Creatives. He's gonna be there. Nice. Um, we have Ian HQ. His name is Nas. He's a dope designer. He'll be there. All from, a, these are all New Jersey. All cats. New Jersey. Like, I'm telling you, man, you guys are doing great yeah. things. I gotta be honest. I love going yeah. out there. You know, you guys are about to make me force me to getting a car because <laughs> I've had more fun out there in the last five events that I've been out there than I do when I, you know, when I hang out out here in New York. It's more of a pure vibe. If yeah. You, will. I, I you agree know what with I'm that. saying? Like people seem really loving. You can walk about, up to people. Exactly. And I like bubbling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I get tired of the pretentiousness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so bad that it rubbed off on me. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's bad. Yeah, I understand. You know, because you are in the... In, you, sometimes you are you your become, environment. Exactly. You know what I mean? And I, I don't like to be that way. It has a... You know, the vibe out there is very chill. People are approachable. You know, and, and they really just care about their crafts. So yeah, for something. sure. And honest. so the program is... Um, it's going to be... Two weeks in July and then two weeks in August it's going to be split up. The last day will be a nature, um, not nature. It's going to be a garden led, garden led, student led garden fashion show. Uh, so it's going to be a small, you know, fashion show with the students who are involved. Um, we, Where are you getting these students from? So, yeah. So I started to work with the Newark School of Fashion and Design. They actually just opened in September 2021. So I'm really excited. Shout out to Principal Pitts. She's a dope woman. She loves her students. She loves education. She... She's awesome. Um, and so she's really been supporting me with this. Um, just, you know, pointing me in the right direction. And also the North School of Fashion and Design is actually powered by Parsons, which is the number one design school Parsons in the country. Parsons valid. Gotta yeah, be honest. Very valid. So <laughs> for me to be working with that yeah. school is just a really big deal. Um, yeah. And so... I'm just really pushing my way into education um, in this way because, again, I told you I didn't uh, co-found a nonprofit. And so that that was an education. I learned a lot and how to kind of get into education through the back door because I don't want to have to uh, exist within the structures that are already there because they haven't worked. They just haven't. So um, with this program, this would be the first program of its kind. I haven't seen, um, you know, a program like this to teach students about their impact as consumers, to teach them how to express themselves, to continue to follow their dreams. It will be about sustainable fashion, of course, but it's bigger than that. And we need sustainable fashion, let's be honest. Absolutely. You know? We're polluting the freaking world yeah. immensely. It's we out are. of control. You we know? are. And it's, it's so important. I just don't want to pay $500 for a t-shirt, but I right. mean, we might come we, up when we're going to have to. Right, but we are paying $500. Well, some people are paying $500 for shirts that are not, that are like half plastic. And that's a problem. So yeah. it's like, at least if you're going to pay it, pay it to yeah, the earth. Exactly. Um, and so it's helping us. If we don't, you know, do that, then we're going to be kind of fucked. Um, yeah, no, that's a fact. I yeah. mean, it's not looking good. It's a dying situation. It's not. It's not. Actually, three days from now, May 4th, um, New Jersey is going to start the plastic ban. So this is something I'm also going to be talking about at, in the fashion program. Um, and so with this fashion program, it's about sustainability. To me, sustainability is love. Um, and so... I'm going to be teaching the students to create sustainable practices in their lives and create a design technique, a creative process that they can um, hone into. So sustainability is, you know, having the right people around you so you can sustain, you know, so that you can continue to follow your dreams with the support you need. So, you know, practicing a craft and actually creating a schedule that is sustainable. And it's not it. sustainability is not just about plastic. It's about continuing to move forward and exactly. thinking about the people behind you that are going to come and thinking about the future and how your how your decisions today are going to impact the future and people who are under you. So 
Yeah, that's what the nature. I love the initiative. Fire. Thank you, thank Fire. you. I'm excited Fire. about it. Yeah. Fire all across the board. You're yeah. bringing heat here. You know yeah, what I mean? Entrepreneurship. You know? By the way, folks, um, there is a playlist for entrepreneurs now in Angel the Words podcast. We have broken. We have a uh, how do you say? We have niche down. So uh, if you notice on the YouTube channel, there's four different. You know, we, we're four different niches, and business and entrepreneurship is one of them, and arts is another. So you know you'll find this video also in both of those playlists. Okay. Uh, just so you know that. Now, I want to talk, touch on one more thing before we close up the podcast, because, you know, you know, and I want to extend my condolences to you because I know, um, you know, you lost your mother to lupus. Yeah. I lost my favorite aunt to lupus who, leave me, who left me this chain. That's oh, why wow. I wear it all the time. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a big jewelry guy, but yeah. this is the last thing she ever gave me. You know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, I just want to know, are you, are you trying to do anything with foundations for lupus or anything of that nature? Is that something you would do in the future? Because I know, you know, it's, it's a tough disease and I know a lot of people that have been impacted by it. Yeah, um, I do feel like at some point I want to uh, connect some of the things I'm doing to lupus. Actually, everything green will eventually have, um, you know, like fresh pressed juices, vegan soaps, um, different sustainable and like vegan products to help people with their health. Um, and I feel like that's an ode to my mom because um, she actually suffered from chronic kidney disease for 10 years. And then. Yeah, and then she also got diagnosed with lupus, and in initially, um, well, essentially at the end, she passed away from like a uh, multiple organ failure. Yeah, my aunt too. Yeah, so that was a really hard thing to go through, and so I don't want to see, and I and I don't just mean like the death. I mean literally over the course of the years, and you wouldn't even know, like if you know if she obviously not here right now, but like if she was here right now, you wouldn't know it was anything wrong with her. She looked perfectly fine. It was just us on the inside who knew. Um, and so it's just, you know, to just remember that the people around you, they're, they're going through things and not just the people who are actually sick, but the people who are attached to these people. You go through a lot seeing someone fighting for their health um, all the time, 24 seven. And so with that, um, yeah, at some point I will do something connected to lupus, but I do feel like, um, everything green is about connecting to everything, you know, because it's not just lupus, you know, that was what actually killed her, but she had chronic kidney disease for years. And that's something that's actually reversible. That's actually, that's something that you do to yourself by your eating habits, by, um, your emotional habits, by not healing your trauma, um, you know, unhealed trauma can kill your organs. It will kill your yeah, organs. Yeah, it can it's kill your it can kill your organs. Um, so yeah, with that, that's that's really how I'm pouring into that health and wellness kind of aspect, just from changing your life, changing your relationships so that you have some accountability when people see you ain't never drink no water. Like I got friends that'd be like, You need to drink some water. You know, yeah. like I like friends like that. My my grandfather <laughs> won't like I don't know how he's in his eighties. He doesn't he doesn't drink, drink water. water. Wow. Coors Light is his water. <laughs> some people are just... It's out of control, though. Some people are blessed with not being able to do that. Like, for example, there's people I know who smoke cigarettes their whole life and they, nothing's wrong. They never yeah. got cancer or nothing. They just yeah. smoke cigarettes their whole life and there's nothing. You know? So some people are just like that. But that doesn't mean you should take the chance. Yeah, that's <laughs> a fact. You know what I mean? So, yes, I, I, I like the green initiative. You know what Thank I mean? Thank you. You know, the diet is an important situation and people that, you know, if you know anyone that's dealing with lupus, the diet is extremely important because sure. it's about your immune system. Yeah. And you need to you need to give your immune system the best things possible and available, you know, f you know, food wise and try to reduce your stress because all that stuff, you know, it's a, it's a trigger mechanism if you don't take care of that situation. So thank you for, you know, letting us know about that. And uh, before you leave, because you leave a message to the people over here, um, you know, that want to, wanna, yeah, just a message to the people who want to become entrepreneurs. A message to people who want to become entrepreneurs, I would say heal yourself first. Um, healing is not linear, so it's a journey. But definitely continue to pour into yourself before you try to pour into another entity. It's like having a baby before you're ready. So it's like, why sign up for your, you know, why sign up for that? Um, so, yeah, just make sure you're ready. Make sure you have the support and just do it with love. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Make sure it's, you know, it's everything green. It's equitable. It's essential. It's effective. And shit, follow everything green, everything dot G-R-E-E-E-N um, for tips on that. So, yeah. Other socials. Let them know the other socials. Um, you can follow me on my personal page at I am Deja Monet. That's I A M D E J A H M O N A I. Um, you can follow Black the Brand. I swear I got 
you know, my little sweater, my bracelets, you know, a little drip. <laughs> B-L-A-K-T-H-E-B-R-A-N-D, Black the Brand, and What's the Wave New Jersey at What's W-H-A-T-S-T-H-E-W-A-V-E-N-J. There you have it, everyone. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank Monet, you for having me. For being on the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Share the yeah. messages. We out here trying to heal. We out here trying to work. You know what I mean? Let it, let them know who's your favorite podcaster now on the come up. You know, <laughs> Angel of Words. So tap on that notification bell or click on it. Whatever it is you want to do. Like, follow, share. Catch us on the website. You can get the merchandise there. And also we have uh, amazing blogs and different content on the website. It's the www.aowent.com and if you want to know how to start your own podcast as well reach out to us on the website as well our information is located on there so you know you can get your voice out there and you know if you need to start one click on the links below you know uh the equipment that we use uh is is there now a uh, podcast sponsored by otw threads be out of this world attitude on 10.com your place to start learning how to heal from trauma everyone I appreciate y'all tuning in. I'll talk to you later.